Ah, hello folks and welcome to Glencoe. The plan today is to have a wild camp up on Bukal Etiv Beak. If all goes to plan, I'll also meet Stripey Hat Guy as well later on. We've got slightly different plans. I'm hoping to do both of them on rows on the ridge. I think Stripey is going to take a more direct route and meet me up at the camp spot later on. So we'll just see how it goes. The car park was full on arrival, so I found a lay-by about 400 yards down the road. So I parked there. And to keep myself off the main road, I'm just on the, the military road at the moment, which is a nice little walk in itself. This fantastic structure here, folks, is the Coffin Cairn. And this marked the route where the loved ones would take their recently deceased relatives down through the Larig from Glen Etiv into Glen Coe. And apparently there was another big cairn on the other side of the pass which marked the route. This was knocked down when they built the new road. The uh, road constructors were told to replace the cairn and put it all back, so here it is today in all its glory. Right, well this is the start of the walk for Bukowita Peak and it's two Munros. Let's crack on. Reached uh, Bialak a few moments ago, had a quick bite to eat. Uh, decided to do the one at the back first, which I think is called Stob Do. And I've only done this one once, but I've done the other one twice. It'll be three times hopefully later today. So, uh, yeah, makes sense to do this one first. Get out of the way. It's just gone back at 12, so got three hours solid daylight. So, uh, yeah, let's go. I have just reached the 902 spot height, which is the start of the ridge, and it's looking absolutely super boss, honestly. Fantastic winter conditions. Shall we? The conditions are pretty much perfect, very light wind, and the clarity is so clear, you can see for miles. And you've got a nice bit of wispy cloud as well. <laughs> uh, if you continue on down the ridge just after the summit, you got a nice view down Glen Etiv, and Ben Nevis is out on show as well. In fact, just about every peak's on show today. Super boss. Okay, snack of the trip. This is going to be my new segment in my videos. I'm going to pick one random snack. Could be savoury, could be sweet, or just be something random that I've picked out in the shops. So today I have got the Gold Billions Wafer Bar. I don't know if you remember the Gold Bars, it's just a better version of them. So let's crack it open. It tastes a bit like a caramac. Like that. Mm. You can see there, it's got biscuit in the middle. So the caramac taste around it, and they're just super boss. I've been getting my friend Tarek to get me a box of these from uh, the wholesale. I go halfers with a friend at work. <laughs> <laughs> and they're brilliant. I made a bit of an arse of myself. 
I was talking to this girl and I says, where have you travelled from? And she says, can you see? And I went, eh? And she went, can you see? And I went, can I see what? And she says to me, you asked where I've travelled from. Can you see? And then the penny dropped. Can you see? I said, oh no. <laughs> I just wanted the ground to open up and swallow me. I've dropped down the north side of the mountain and I tell you what folks, it's like a freezer on this side obviously it's a, the north aspect and it just hasn't seen much sunlight at all I was just thinking to myself I'm running out of a ridge here and then I've just spotted a green jacket it looks like El Stripo let's have a look, oh I can see his tent I can see him, I think he spied me I'll show you just now, I'll get over this little brow There he is, can you see him? Nice pitch among the rocks I wonder where I'll go though Hello! <laughs> How's it going? Oh good, beautiful day for a hike Stunning! Aye Chilly it's alright, not yet. <laughs> but the sun is now disappearing. It will get cold, yeah. <laughs> right, I better find a pitch. Where to go? Where to go? Let's have a look. Right, I have got the scarp ultra with me again. The crisp packet. Of course, there's nothing worse when the poles come apart inside the, the sleeve. I'm going to stop filming. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's, a, it's a really sad story, is what I've seen. Well, I got there in the end, folks. What was wrong is the, the check strap was caught in a mitten hook. And that's why I couldn't get the, the uh, pole into this little pocket. So once I discovered that, I took it off and it's fine now. But what a pain. Sorted. It's a little bit lumpy bumpy, but that'll do. Well, it is um, minus five degrees Celsius outside. It's rather cold. My water is beginning to freeze already. So I'm going to make myself a mug shot because I'm getting pretty hungry. Save the main meal for a little bit later. I came a bit better prepared this time. Two weekends ago I was warm enough but only once I got in the sleeping bag. So this week I have my Montane Prism booties and I've got the Montane Prism trousers on as well. I can probably not see them very well. Which I've um, got over my long johns so hopefully it means I can sit out and chat to Stripey because I've got this live feed to record which will be on a different video uh, Yeah, so the cloud might come over and cover us so the temperature might increase a little bit um, but yeah, minus 5 as it is at the moment Well folks, I'm absolutely delighted with that We uh, were just standing chatting away up at the summit there and we could just see the Aurora Borealis just starting to make an appearance doing its little dance it got better and better and uh, got the camera out managed to get a couple bits of footage of it so hopefully it's turned out all right but yeah it was cracking and we could actually see it with the visible eye this time which is really good i'm gonna get dinner on because uh, i don't know what time it is but it must be back at six seven o'clock by now uh, 
I'm nice and warm, my feet are warm. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll see what the temperature is. Oh. So last time I checked it was minus five. Uh, still minus five and it's dropped down to minus six at some point. But that's it, peaked maybe. It's just one of these nights folks, it just keeps on giving. First there's absolutely no wind, then we got the aurora, and then just to top everything off, the oxygen absorber in my freeze dry meal was boom, sitting right at the top. What more could you ask for? Super boss. Yeah, so finally I've brought along my PhD Hisper 400 I think it is, and it's good down to minus 6 apparently, so I don't know why I've stopped taking it. I used it all through, throughout the Cape Raft Trail and it was absolutely fine. And then just recently, I've not used it. And I've been bringing the Rab one for colder weather. Um, but this is just so much lighter. It weighs 600 grams or, or thereabouts. But I nearly peed on it. <laughs> I should admit this. But uh, on the Cape Raft Trail, it was, quite, it was quite far into the trip. I woke up about 3, 4 in the morning, as you do, needing a pee. And because it's a half zip, obviously rolled the sleeping bag off me and I'm kneeling at the apex of the notch and I'm doing my pee in a ball, as you do. So picture the scene, not too much, but I was up like that, peeing away. I thought I'd finished, put the lid back on the ball, so that was fine. No spills from the bottle. And then I lifted the elastic from the long johns and then that must have released the pressure. And what happened was, as soon as that happened, I dribbled. And it probably wasn't that much, but I actually felt like I'd maybe lost an egg cupful worth of pee and it all went on my sleeping bag. So at three, four in the morning, half asleep, I'm rummaging about my tent, trying to find the antibacterial wipes and uh, try to clean it as much as I could and hope it wasn't going to penetrate the feathers. And <laughs> I should admit that because if I want to sell this on eBay, People are like, is that the tent, uh, the sleeping bag that you peed on? If so, I will not be bidding on it. But uh, it's a top quality bag anyway. Um, it's not like you can go out and buy a PhD bag every day of the week because they are really expensive. So I've just checked the little kestrel and it's coming up with one minus 1.6 degrees Celsius. My watch was saying minus six earlier, so I don't know how accurate the watch is. What I need to do is put them side by side and just do a little comparison, make sure the, the watch isn't over egging it. I know when it's on your wrist, it's not accurate because it's picking up your, the heat off your wrist, but uh, yeah, I'll be interested to see how accurate the watch is. I've not been able to wear my watch either because I keep getting a horrible rash, like eczema or dermatitis. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I've got a big patch there on my wrist. And that was from October when I did that big route with uh, Mushy. So what I've done is I've put the watch on a keyring. It's got this little carabiner clip there. And that just sits on my rucksack and it's like a nurse. I can just check the time whenever I want or whatever. Obviously I can't do the heart rate because it's not against my skin, but that means the battery will last longer anyway. And this was uh, £15, a bit expensive right enough, but I just felt it's got a decent clip on it to make sure I don't lose it. Good morning campers. It has just gone 7 o'clock. As you can see, I'm up already. Um, Sunrise isn't until another hour and 20 minutes, so it's just going to be a slow pack up, put the stove on, get something to eat, and uh, see what Stripe is up to as well. Uh, I've checked the temperature, it's about one degree, so there must be a cloud cover because the, the temperature's risen considerably. It was like minus six just at sunset yesterday, so yeah. And the watch and the Kestrel are pretty much bang on. One says 0 0.5 and the other one says 1, so uh, aye. Right, enough gabbing, let's uh, look at getting packed up. Well, as you can probably see, it's a little bit grim. 
the cloud is down and there's a couple of little snowflakes there. Yeah, so I'm not be showing you much views this morning. But anyway, I'm going to drop the tent, catch up with Stripey. But I have to say, sorry. Lost my train of thought now. But yeah, as regards to Glencoe while camping, this is probably, in my opinion, one of the finest spots. Controversial, maybe a lot of people might say it's been a crucially just over there, or even the, the shoulder leading up to the Unachirik from the Devil Staircase or the Lost Valley, but they've all been done to death. So uh, here's another location. <laughs> It is a bit harder, but you're talking what, sub three hours Aye. to get up and over the Munro and right down the ridge. Um, it's worth it. Oh yes, my favourite part. Striking camp. Oh, that's frozen in. Oh. Oof. Well folks, there's not much more to show you, so I'm going to wrap this up. We need to head back up that Munro. So if you've watched this far, thank you very much. And I shall catch you in the next one. Cheers. Ta-da!